This episode is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Starship updates, ESA 21% budget increase and NASA radiation protection vest for the trips to Mars and Moon. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. Before we get the party started, I have a little Christmas present for you. It's a rebate code for the merchandise store and you can find it in the description. And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship updates. Since SpaceX's Starship Mark 1 anomaly last month, the damaged tank section has been sitting on its launch mount in the Boca Chica dunes, waiting for the inevitable, its deconstruction. And this deconstruction has now begun. Early last week, workers began to remove parts. First, aerodynamic covers and raceways running along the sides of the fuselage, then the tank section was cut in half to reduce the weight of the separate parts. The common dome between methane and oxygen tank was ripped out as well. SpaceX took it slow and disassembled the Mark 1 prototype into lots of separate parts for easy transportation. And even those parts are being cut up into smaller pieces right now. At the time of making this episode, SpaceX was already working to take down the large lower fins. They took their time and everything was done pretty carefully, so it might be that we see these fins again mounted onto a new tank section for Mark 3. It's going to be interesting to see if the design of the fins has changed at all or if SpaceX will just reuse the same fins again. It's also by now confirmed that Go Discovery indeed is heading for Brownsville, Texas to deliver jigs and a bulkhead for Mark III construction in Boca Chica. Thank you all very much for the comments pointing me to the source. So we should soon see the delivery of these parts by truck from Brownsville. The more SpaceX can integrate from the work in Florida, the faster they can construct another prototype for the first test flight. More work has been done on the foundation for the orbital launch facility. This thing is growing bigger and bigger. Right now it's just a game of imagination, but we should soon see first concrete pouring work and later after that SpaceX will erect a 30 meter tall launch mount including an internal flame diverter, fueling systems and, if the animation from the Starship presentation was representative, some sort of clamp system to secure Super Heavy on top of it. Boca Chica is becoming quite the different place with a few locals still living right next to the launch site. A new spaceport for a new era of spaceflight in a place most people didn't even know existed before SpaceX drew so much attention to it. ESA 21% budget increase Recently ESA had a press conference presenting the budget for the next three years and there were some big surprises in there that I'd like you to know. Jan Werner, Director General of the European Space Agency, stated at a council meeting at Space 19 Plus on November 28th that ESA is receiving a huge budget increase of around 21% for the next three years of operations. In total, ESA is talking about a budget of 14.4 billion euros over three years or 4.8 billion euros per year. There are four main pillars in ESA's plans. Science and exploration, where science is looking at the stars, exploring black holes and other things has received an increase of about 10% of its budget. Exploration, which includes all of ESA's efforts to send astronauts to low Earth orbit but also to the Moon. It also includes robotic missions to Moon, Mars and other locations throughout the solar system. This pillar received a very big increase of about 30% because ESA is fully engaged working on the Lunar Gateway and Artemis missions with NASA. The second pillar in ESA's plans is completely new. It's called Safety and Security and its job is to look at potential hazards in space but also here on Earth. It includes projects related to space weather like solar flare detection, space debris removal and asteroid deflection. This was one of the biggest topics at the ESA Open Day 2019 which I attended together with Scott Manley. The third pillar being applications covers Earth observation, navigation and telecommunication. Telecommunication, for example, includes research about quantum key distribution. Here, quantum mechanics are used to secure a data link between two participants to basically make it almost impossible to get through the encryption. The fourth and last pillar is called Enabling and Support. This pillar is all about new technologies and space transportation. Here, reusable rockets and shuttles are the main focus. ESA is dedicated to renewing the whole organization structure. No doubt a result of the recent direction changes with companies like SpaceX reinventing space travel. 
ESA will focus on cost reduction, more efficiency and agility. Innovations like artificial intelligence will be put to use here as well as commercialization. ESA will develop a plan to achieve these goals and present it in half a year. Amongst the biggest projects for the coming three years are of course the Artemis program and the Lunar Gateway, sending astronauts to the moon again, the Space Rider, a small reusable shuttle funded mainly by Italy and last but not least Europe's Sentinel satellite fleet. Monitoring Earth environmental impacts like sea levels, CO2 emissions and global warming. Europe has dedicated itself to reducing carbon emissions by 55% by the year 2030. Sentinel satellites play an important role in researching the impact and finding those who do not obey the goal. Germany, providing 3.3 billion euros to the budget, by far is the largest contributor to ESA's budget increase. This once again shows the magnitude of this new space race. Efforts done to increase our engagement in human exploration are not only done by the United States. Europe and ESA are ramping up their budget to prepare to be a strong partner in future missions. NASA's Radiation Protection Vest When it comes to dangers for astronauts on long duration missions, radiation is one of the topics receiving the most attention. I've made a double feature about dangers in space and even here at What About It, cosmic rays were a very important topic when it comes to how not to die in space. In an effort to mitigate the danger posed by radiation in space, NASA is stepping up their game on protective gear. Normally, whenever space radiation gets attention from us content creators, it's all about some sort of protection based on the spacecraft the astronauts are traveling in. Artificial magnetic shielding, radiation shelters, improved hull shielding… all these topics have been covered on my episodes. What almost no one covers though is protective clothing for astronauts. This has many obvious benefits. It is much cheaper to produce, can quickly be put into place and is very versatile. Protective clothing shields an astronaut wherever he or she is. Most other shielding options only protect part of the spacecraft. NASA now seems to have made a breakthrough when it comes to prototyping these kinds of protective suits. A team at NASA's Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia is actively working on such a protective vest right now. Its purpose is to shield Artemis astronauts during every phase of the mission against solar particle events. Basically, a raincoat against space weather. In the events of a solar storm, astronauts can wear the vest to get proper protection against raised radiation levels. While designing the vest, multiple prototype stages have already been completed and the very special gear is nearing completion. A year into development, the idea is not new. Ten years ago, there was already an effort to develop such a suit. It never made it out of the design phase though, as it was not practical enough. This new attempt promises to be much easier to use. It uses hydrogen-rich material for protection and when finished, NASA will outsource production to a not yet announced commercial partner. Sometimes thinking outside of the box provides new approaches and solutions to problems that are difficult to solve. If this vest provides the proper protection, it might even be a very good choice for Mars. Let me knock something off your holiday to-do list here real quick. A gift that doesn't need a box. Think outside of the box when you pick your Christmas gifts this year. Filled with knowledge on all sorts of topics, Brilliant.org provides your loved ones with the means of connecting dots, giving them the know-how to come up with solutions others can't. Building a broad repository of knowledge can be very easy if it is presented in the right way, and this is Brilliant.org's biggest strength compared to a traditional learning method. Brilliant is thinking outside of the box when it comes to teaching. Think outside of the box this year and give the gift of knowledge to someone you love. Go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and grab a gift subscription to help your loved ones finish their day a bit smarter. The first 200 to join through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription, so gift differently with brilliant.org. Link is in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. When will we see the first ring stacking for Mark III and does that NASA vest give enough protection? As always, tell me in the comments. And done again, another episode full of interesting facts and topics about our favorite hobby, space. But there are some who want to go the full 9 yards when it comes to supporting me and my small team, the patrons. They build one of the main cornerstones for the channel, helping to create and fund what you just saw. And I thank them on every single episode for that very reason.
And as always, there are new additions to the team. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Dwayne Lawrence and many others. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? If you liked what you saw, remember to hit the like and the subscribe button because that helps the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. I've made a double feature on <clears throat> on dogs. <laughs> Half to reduce the weight of the separate of the se god damn fly how to die in space how not to die in space let me knock something that <laughs> let me knock something <laughs> dear and give the gift of love <laughs>